Hey everyone, Ram Ben Avram here again for AE Tuts, and welcome to the second part of my Funky Particles tutorial. So, let's first have a quick preview of what we're gonna be creating today. <laughs> You can even use it for lips syncing. Okay, so at the previous part of this tutorial, we discussed the interface of sound keys and its basic features. Today we're gonna discuss some more advanced ways of using the sound keys plugin. More in particular, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use it to lip sync and how to do this uh, music video like horse bit I've done here. So let's first start with the lip syncing. Let's first start off by creating a new composition. To have a successful uh, lip syncing uh, bit, you need to have at least five or six uh, different expressions, different uh, facial expressions. Now in my case I don't have any facial expressions, it's just a talking Pac-Man, but what I do have is, um, well, let me show you. To first create the Pac-Man, you need to create a new solid. And we'll make it uh, green this time. And we'll call this uh, Pac-Base01. Let's uh, create a new composition, and we'll call it Pac-Man. And we'll drag inside the Pac-Base01. And let's apply to it the CC Sphere effect. Okay. But right now our Pac-Man has no mouth. So let's uh, create another one simply by duplicating the last one. I would like to create lips. And for creating my Pac-Man lips, all I need to do is trim a bit of the left and right sides. And arguably the simplest way to do that is by creating a mask. And I'm going to take my uh, top and bottom mask and crank it up. Crank the top, crank the bottom. And I'm going to use the mask expansion to trim the solid. You don't have to do this, of course, this way you can trim by using the mask manually, but uh, I prefer this way because, well, this way I have uh, some number to work with, which I always prefer. So, let's uh, first trim it by 50, and let's see how that looks. Well, right now I can't really see my Pac-Man, so I would need to turn the sphere around. Let's go into rotation, and there it is. Rotate it on the own axis. Okay, this should be fine. We have a uh, pack base which has no mouth opening at all. We have a uh, pack base two which has mouth opening of uh, 50. So let's uh, duplicate uh, this one about uh, four or five more times. And we're increasing the mouth opening by 50% more every time. Minus 200 here. And minus 250 here. Let's close all these. Okay, great. What we need to do next to help some keys animate our Pac-Man, first we need to drag in all our uh, Pac-Base compositions. So you just uh, arrange them in the right order. Okay. So we got 1 to 6, and they all need to be 1 frame long. So mark them all, hold close bracket, that will cut them to the correct length, and we need them to stack one after the other. Of course you can uh, just Move them by hand, but the quickest way to do that is mark them all, right click on one of them, keyframe assistant, sequence layer, we don't want them to overlap, and there you go. And actually it's not in the right order, I want first frame to start and the last frame to be at the end. After Effects sequences the layers by the order I picked them. So, at first I picked the last frame and then the first frame, so now I'll pick the first frame, then the last frame, right click on it, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, ok, and there you go. 
Now let's uh, work just a little bit more on the sphere, just to have uh, something nicer to work on. All right, that should be fine for now. Now let's copy this effect and paste it to everyone else. Well, you know what? This might be too much. So let's uh, let's uh, lower the values here. So instead of 150, we will say minus 110 and minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, 500. And let's see how that looks. That looks better. When you're working on the uh, human facial uh, expressions, you you might want to use more than uh, six expressions, but for this example, I'm using just six. Let's uh, mark all these layers and decompose them. Hit Control Shift C, and we'll call it Pac-Man Levels. We need to do one more thing to the Pac-Man Levels composition before you forget all about it. And later on, I'll show you why we need to do that. We need to make the last layer the longest, and I'll show you why later. So, let's uh, apply our audio track, which in this case is my lip sync audio. And let's trim the composition to the length of the lip sync audio. I have a nice uh, little tip for you for that purpose. If you will click I, you will go to the start of your layer. O will send you to, this, to the end of your layer. B will set the start of the work area and N will set the end of the work area. So if you'll click a layer and hit I bone, I B O N, quick way of setting your work area. And then right click on it, doing come to work area. So I bone, quick and easy time saver. Okay, so now we've got the lip sync audio. Let's create a new adjustment layer. And that will be our sound keys layer. Let's apply sound keys to it. And let's apply the audio layer to lip sync audio. Let's see how the equalizer works on this uh, particular audio. Let's have a preview of that actually. You can even use it for lips syncing. Okay. So you can see most of the audio happens around this area. And in this case, I don't need to uh, choose a small fraction of the equalizer. I need actually to choose most region which is active and seems that's pretty much it okay I think I've got most of it maybe the base as well and some more room okay should be fine now how do you think we can get our Pac-Man to sync to the audio using the sound keys well arguably the best way is using Time remapping. So right click on your Pac-Man layer, go to time, enable time remapping. Hit the arrow to go to the last level, which we can see right now because the worker is trimmed, and remove that last frame. So now we have no animation whatsoever. Let's hit U to reveal the keyframes in the sound keys layer. Alright, we don't have any because we didn't hit apply. Let's hit apply and hit U. Okay, there they are. And now I'll click on the stopwatch next to the time remap and pick with it to the sound keys output one. And what happened? Absolutely nothing. And that's because we need to apply one more expression to the time remap and that's linear expression. Let's uh, put a semicolon here and let's go down one line later. And let's hit linear, open parentheses, x comma zero comma, oh sorry, comma. 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, close parentheses. Now, nothing will happen in here again, and more than that, After Effects will tell us that our expression is completely wrong. Which is correct, it is completely wrong at the moment. First of all, what is x? Well, x equals output 1. And what does these values stand for? Well, the first zero stands for the highest old value. The second zero stands for the lowest low value and the third zero stands for the highest new value and the fourth zero stands for the lowest new low value now what are these values for a moment here let's uh, mark the linear expression and control x 
get rid of it and we're left with the first expression now if you'll check out this part the numeric values we got here of the time remap you can see we got numbers here these numbers here will give us the values we need now if we'll scroll a bit here we can see that well 30 is just about the highest value we get and the lowest value is just about zero so let's paste in back the linear expression and type in that the old highest value is 30 and the old lowest value is zero and let's see how that acts again nothing happens and that's because we didn't set the new highest value and let's say the new highest value should be around 100 and that's too much actually I'm gonna say that the new highest value is 1 and let's see how that works you can even use it for lips syncing you can even use it for lips syncing well it works it's not perfect so let's say 1.5 you can even use it for lips syncing you can I think that's the most we can get out of this uh, composition right here now it's not perfect lip syncing and that has to do mostly because we have only six levels of uh, facial expressions if you will in the original project I had uh, three different uh, Pac-Mans with the first one had 20 levels the second one had uh, 10 and the last one had 5 and I actually found out that the one with 10 levels worked best for this particular sound and with this uh, particular Pac-Man or face you need to experiment with that and see what works best for you but this is arguably the best method for lip syncing and that's just about it about lip syncing so let's uh, move forward to the horse for the horse composition I actually used two uh, different pieces of uh, horse footages so let's uh, try and recreate it let's create a new composition and we we'll drag in the horse 1 horse gate 1 the original size of the video is uh, of the 640 by 480 so let's match it up. Next thing we want to do is apply the audio. I've already created a horse slow motion audio, which is just a piece of uh, audio repeating itself. Let's uh, trim the scump to the right size by clicking I bone and trim scump to work area. Cool. And now let's see. Let's create a new adjustment layer, call it sound keys, and apply sound keys to it. And let's uh, apply the audio layer to the audio layer all right move it down and let's see let's have uh, first uh, have a quick look on how the sound keys equalizer works <laughs> okay so I've got two peaks here in the sound keys the bass and the treble now uh, the bass at its peak is reaching way too high actually be above the spectrum let's uh, deal with that first I would like to lower the bass just a bit so the highest point isn't uh, crossing the spectrum okay now of course remember this doesn't affect the sound whatsoever it's just the way that uh, sound keys interpretates the audio and the second peak comes from the treble but it's not that high so let's increase that so they're both uh, just about equal well there's just about all right so let's close this one up open the range one and let's search for the highest uh, point of the base this should be it and that will be our range one and uh, range two let's activate that one and let's see the highest point of our treble
let's uh, scroll down a bit all right oh yeah we got the uh, highest here okay uh, that's just about it the reason I'm using the uh, two ranges is because I want uh, one range to affect the motion of the clip and the other to affect the effects that I'm going to apply to the clip well let me show you first things first we haven't uh, applied the sound keys yet so let's hit apply and let's hit you to see if that works worked perfectly okay now let's uh, once again right click on the horse gate and add time enable time remapping and go to the last keyframe and erase that I'll click on the stopwatch of the time remap and oh sorry we need to reveal this one first so pick whip to the output one and let's see how that looks <music> Well, it works, but it's a bit too fast for my taste. So we need to adjust the expression a bit. First, let's uh, let's uh, say that x equals output one and semicolon at the end. And the only reason I'm doing this is it's easier to write x than this whole sentence, right? So now we've uh, finished that. Let's uh, go to the second line and write time remap plus x and divide it by five let's see how that looks well that doesn't work whatsoever and that's because i misspelled time remap it needs to be a small t not a capital t okay let's try this okay that works better but i think we can slow it down even more let's say divide it by 10 and let's have a preview that looks that looks much better okay great okay so next what we want to do is create some nice looking effects to go along with our horse and animate them using the output 2 of our sound keys so let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll call it effects and let's see I used magic bullet looks and let's see uh, let's see let's see This looks nice. Let's use that. And I've also used Edged Film by Diggy Effects. Raise the source blend to somewhere around 30. And let's see. Let's randomize the seed here. That's quite right. Actually, I think we can get a nicer look from uh, Magic Bullet Looks. Okay. So this is getting uh, closer to what we had in mind. And one more thing, let's add a nice silhouette. Then subtract it. How are we going to animate this one? Well, quite easily. Instead of going inside these uh, effects parameters, what I'm going to do is animate the adjustment layer's opacity. So I'll click on the stopwatch, pick whip it to output 2. And let's have a quick preview of that. Well, it's a bit too fast once again. So this time, what I'm going to do is what the same thing I did with the Pac-Man. I'm going to add a linear effect. So first, let's hit X equals output 2, put it a semicolon at the end, and write linear, open parentheses, x, comma 0, comma 0, comma 0, comma 0, close parentheses, and let's find out what's the original highest value, so for a moment there let's alt x on the linear expression, and let's see, well, the highest value is around 70, let's say, oh, it was 100 for a second there, okay. And the lowest value 
is around five. Okay. So paste back the linear expression and the highest value is 100. The lowest value, oldest, the old lowest value was five. So now there's absolutely no change whatsoever. Let's leave the highest value at zero and set the highest, the lowest value to 100. Let's see how that works. Well, that actually works quite nice. Okay, great. So let's um, mark all of these and pre-compose it. Control Shift C, call it horse one. Horse zero one. Okay, and let's close this up. And let's call this comp horses. Great. And duplicate horse one. Call it horse two. Let's go inside horse 2 and let's switch the video. Hold click and drag inside and now we get the same animation happens to horse 2. So let's open horses. Here we got horse 1 and horse 2. And let's go inside horse 2 and copy our Sunkeys layer and our audio layer and paste it inside the horses comp drag those down, whoops, and since we got an audio layer here we don't need these layers to have any audio, and now what I would like to do is use the sound keys to uh, manipulate between those two, and here's how we're going to do that. Well the way I'm going to do that is actually very very simple, I'm going to go inside horse 2, and I'm going to take the expression I used here. I'm going to copy it and hit T on horse two. I'll click and paste the expression. And let's have a preview of that. And there you go, video, a nice music video clip uh, look to your animation using the sound keys effect. That's just about it for this part of the tutorial. Here's what we're going to create in our third and last part of this tutorial. Well, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, my name is Ramel Abraham and I'll see you in, in the third and last part of this tutorial.